set of enemies. Assalamu uh, alaikum. First of all, I'd like to apologize to Dana because she told me she was going to make that joke. I didn't think it was funny and she fell. So, عيني uh, حارة. I'm, I'm well known to have, uh, unfortunately. Anyway, thank you all for coming. I know it's the last session. You've had a long day. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Let's just uh, get into it. I'm very excited about this topic. It's something I'm very passionate about, and it's called fueling the future. So one of the things I, wanted, I wanna, want you to come out of this talk with is understand a bit more the issues that we hear about every day, which is sustainability, uh, green technology, clean technology, all those issues that sometimes people talk about and don't quite understand what they are. Uh, this is an official definition of what sustainability is, and it basically meet the present needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Uh, for me, in plain English, it means doing things today that will not hurt the future. It's being smart about the way you do things. However, as Kermit, our friend here, says, being green ain't easy. Uh, it's easy to talk about being sustainable, about wanting to do the right thing environmentally, but it costs money. It takes effort, and there's a reason why not everybody is doing it. So let's talk a little bit more about why aren't people doing it. Even though it's been done for thousands of years throughout ancient history, this is an example of the Egyptians. The pharaohs actually used to use the sun to heat pools of water, and at night use those hot water to, to pipe it into the palaces to have hot water at night. A very advanced way of using solar technology thousands of years ago. Other civilizations, such as the Mayans, use the sun in many ways in their calendar, uh, in many different applications. It's, it's a very focused part of their uh, li livelihood, is the solar energy. And going back even 4000 BC, prehistoric time, the invention of fire, which is basically the ultimate renewable energy, and the most important invention in history. If you go through time, you start seeing other examples. 7000 BC, people using uh, magnifying glass to heat uh, papers, to, to cause fires, and then you go 200 BC using simple uh, water to create energy, moving such like turbines and so on to create energy. Getting closer, you start using wind power and sailboats and the Vikings and, and even years before that, using wind energy in many ways. And then all the way down to the early 1900s, the first solar panel created in 1924, I believe Al Albert Einstein won Nobel Prize for understanding photovoltaic technology. And then you get to Closer to today, you have 1950s, the first commercial application of using hot water. And then today in Abu Dhabi, uh, the, the building, the first zero carbon building uh, city called Mustar. So, I mean, this is something that's been around for a long time and, and something that, 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 that's been in development. However, it's kind of slowed down the last 50, 60 years. Why does it matter, though? I mean, why do we even care about this? Why is it such an important topic? Why are we talking about sustainability, green? Uh, solar technology, wind energy. Why have I left my very good job in government for 10 years, three years ago to start this company called Green Golf and get mocked at and uh, abused and uh, made fun of? But anyway, it's a different lecture. But the point is, why are we talking about sustainability today? Well, first of all, you know, the world's growing at a very rapid pace. In the last 50 years, the world's grown faster than any other time in history whether it be population and, and, and all these other things. And because of that, you need more power. You need to burn power, you need to create power quickly. And the most efficient way to do that, in terms of power generation, is coal. Creating, this is an example of coal power, power fire plants in China. This, obviously, as you can see from the smoke, is not the best thing for the environment. I'm not a scientist, we're not uh, uh, gonna debate that today, but it obviously has negative effects. In addition to that, many scientists believe, and a majority of scientists believes that the humans are impacting this directly, and therefore you see more natural disasters, you see stronger natural disasters, such as Katrina and typhoons and so on. In addition, you see overpopulation. Two weeks ago, we hit seven billion uh, people in the, in the world, and that's in the same world. The world hasn't increased in size. If anything, it's decreased. We have to share the same amount of uh, land, the same amount of resources with more people in a faster rate than we ever had before. And if we don't do anything about this, not to sound doom and gloom here, but if we just sit back and, and, and let everything go as is, you know, it's gonna change us one way or another. And this is a very powerful uh, image. It's gonna change us even physically, possibly. So what can we do? I mean, are, are we just going to understand this is something that's gonna happen and we have to live with it, or can we do something about it? Well, the good news is, there's a lot of things we can do. 
whether it be technology, this is an example of solar technology, wind technology, and actual solar farms and sustainable cities that are going to be built around the world. These are things that you can practically do today using technology to help mitigate the impact of, of all the things we talked about earlier. I mean, this is just a very powerful slide, too. This is something called Desert Tech. It's a project sponsored by German government. This shows you that this red square, if you were to build a giant solar farm in the middle of the desert in Sahara, you could power the entire world. So the point here being is not that why aren't we doing it. I mean, there are other implications, but the point is that we can do it. You can physically do things. It's just a question of political will and education, understanding what are the impacts of not doing anything about it. And even in Doha, we're doing things like this. This is my project that we're working on here with Chevron. This is, we're testing different technologies from around the world, bringing them to Qatar and improving them to see what works in desert environment. A lot of things can be done. We need, I mean, without sounding preachy, I mean, I think it's very obvious, in, 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 from your perspective, I, I speak a lot to students, and the best questions I get are from people, high school students, that, that see things from a very kind of basic way. And it's very obvious that things are, are moving very fast. It's very obvious that, you know, we cannot keep living the way we are. We need to do something about it. We need to change our lifestyles to a changing world. And the good news is, uh, people realize that. And one good example of that is, Occupy Wall Street. This is an example of people protesting in New York. People look at this and they think, oh, people are protesting because they can't find jobs, because taxes are high, or whatever economic reason behind it. But if you think about it, my perspective, it's people who are fed up with the status quo. People are fed up with greed. People are fed up with the gap between rich and poor, with the way we eat, the way we live our lives. It's just too much, too focused on the short term, not thinking about sustainability in different ways. This is also a very powerful slide. This came out four days ago, and this tells you something very important. First of all, this is about Qatar. And this tells you that just because we are blessed with wealth does not mean that we are not going to be impacted by this issue. We are very rich, we are very lucky, but we're also the fattest nation in the world, apparently. And that's because we are not living in a sustainable manner. We're not thinking about the way we're living. We're not taking a step back and thinking, okay, now that we have wealth, how should we you know, live our lives properly in a healthy manner and so on. Uh, the good news is, all these issues are being talked about now, and people your generation understand that. And you could, hopefully, when you get to the stage where you're decision makers, sooner rather than later, you will have this in the back of your mind, and you will hopefully uh, affect the way you, you do things going forward. I mean, if I have to leave you with one message, is that everything's connected. I mean, um, what I showed you today was a very high level examples of what's happening in the world and why I think it matters. What, what is very simple to me, the solution is not about talking about policy and government and what governments should do and taxes. I mean, all those things will be done. But what's important is just taking a step back and thinking about, you know, does this make sense? You know, does it make sense that I have to, that my, I'm eating something that's, you know, not, not produced any 2,000 miles from here? Does it make sense that I'm flying across the world for a three-hour meeting? Does it make sense that I'm driving this huge car that I'll never use to go off-road, you know, small things. And then that, that will slowly manifest its way in the way you think and the way you live. And it will hopefully lead to a more sustainable world for us and for our kids. Thank you very much.